Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and some more bonus content today. Now, I think Simon's done a classic Sudoku puzzle for you today. I'm going to have a look at a star battle puzzle. Um, I really like these and I'm not all that good at them necessarily, so we'll see how it goes. I got this from a magazine I picked up at a puzzle competition somewhere years ago called Hashtag Numbers Collected. I don't know much about it, but it has things like Slitherlink and uh, Star Battle, obviously, and Cell Blocks and Kokuro and Futashiki. Quite a lot of the kind of standard puzzle types and number of Star Battles. I like these. So, I'm going to have a go at this. The rules are that we're placing two stars in every row, column, and marked shape. And the stars can never touch each other, even diagonally. So, gonna have a go at this. You can try it on this software. Very grateful to uh, pzv.jp for creating this software. Um, it's I've loaded it on the link below the video, and we'll be kind of discovering how to use it together. It seems to be a left click for putting a star in a cell, and a right click for saying it can't be. Um, it can't have a star in it. So I'm going to start with this shape here. This, to have two stars in this, um, they've got to be in these two locations to not be touching. And I think everything around them that touches those cells diagonally or orthogonally cannot be a star. Now that's useful into this shape on the right. It's got to have a star here because there can only be one in this little section up here. So we can surround that star as well with cells that can't contain stars. Now the other small shapes are over here and down here. So in this one, this can't be a star because it would have to touch the other star. So there must be one here and one in one of those two cells, and they both see that cell, which can't be a star. Down here, there's got to only be one in this two by two area, so we can put a star in there. Um, say no to all the stars there. There has to be one over this side of the box, so these two can't be. And that's really good for this bottom right box. There's clearly now got to be one there, and one in one of the bottom shapes. So we can rule out the rest of the stars in row six, the rest of the cells, I mean. Surround that one, or oh, we can surround this one as well. I've forgotten that. Now there's one in this bottom right cell, so the top two can't have a star. And there must be a star for this shape up here and for the column, so this can't be a star. Now, what else have we got? Right, in this shape here, this cell I'm pointing at cannot be a star. If there was a star there, oh no, it could be. Then there'd be one here. That is possible. Okay, sorry, I was gonna rule that out, but I'm wrong to do so. Okay, row four here. There's only one space left for a star. We've already got one star in, we need another one. It's gotta be here. So that finishes off the shape. We can surround that. This is quite a big shape that runs up to the top left and there's still three different locations where it could have a star. Ah, but this column here with this star in, there's only one cell left, so we've got to have a star there. Okay. Um, one of these two but we don't know which one. Okay, what else can we see here? Ah, okay, one of these two cells in row three must be a star because there's already one star and all the others are ruled out. They both see these two, so we can rule them out. And now in row two, there can only be one star in one of the first two cells, so this one must be the other. So there is one star in one of the first two cells, so these two can now be ruled out. We still don't know which of these two cells in the big shape is a star, but we do know that they both see this cell. 
So that can no longer be a star. So now in this little shape at the top, we can put one in there. Don't know which the other one is, but that's decided the last shape there. Now, column one can't have any in. Column two needs two stars in, so they've clearly got to be not touching each other at the bottom. Row nine is complete. Row eight, we've got the two, two gaps left for two stars. Um, one of those in row seven and that's useful because that decides where the other star in its shape is it must be there that rules out this cell because there's two in the column we can fill one in there and one in there and there we go that's pretty simple it tells us it's complete clever program I mean I've just put that in and it's worked out the solution and that's a very quick star battle puzzle so that was quick enough. What I think I'll do is put another one in to the video and uh, give you a link to that as well. And uh, we'll try that too. So here we are back with another puzzle. I'll give you the link to this below the video too. Um, promise you these are both from the tricky section of the book. Although I don't think that a nine by nine two star star battle puzzle can ever really be all that difficult. I guess that's the moral here. So going to have a go at this one as well and we'll start with these little shapes. They were so useful in the last puzzle, they're useful in this one as well. They'd be known by, they'd be known as an S tetromino in a puzzle with tetrominoes, but we can put two stars in immediately. So as again, I'm going to shade all around the box, a real expert this sort of puzzle wouldn't even need to do that they could just visualize this all done in their head I'm sure um, we've also got another four piece here that's got to have one there and one in the end and we can now see we've already had two stars on the bottom row so we can just deduce where that one goes and this shape as well we've got one, got to have one star at the end because there can only be one in a two by two area uh, this column is full so the other one goes in there and okay that's the I mean we're just basically given that from the start now after that what's the next move to make now this this shape here has been reduced to a hexomino if you like three two one that can't have a star here because that would always be touching the other star wherever it was. Um, this shape up here, now I was going to say there can only be a maximum of one star in the top row and that's true but that doesn't mean that there is one star in the bottom row there could actually be two stars in the bottom row. There must be at least one star in the bottom row so the cells that all of these three cells touch can't have stars in. And they are those two positions. Um, not sure if that's telling us anything crucial. Let's see what else we can deduce from here. Ah, this big right hand bottom shape. Okay, it's got to have one star in row eight here to make up the number, uh, row seven to make up the numbers for that row. So one of these three is a star. That means this one isn't. I'm just kind of picking off individual cells. That's not probably the right way to go. Um, in this shape, any two by two cell, any two by two area can only have one star in it. So there's one there and one up here. Um, okay, and there is one up here. So in the top two rows, there's one here, there's one here, there's two in this shape, so these two other cells in the top two rows can't have one because that's already four. Um, maybe we can use that principle somewhere else. This one, this puzzle does seem a little harder to me, I have to say. I'm quite keen to put a star in here, but it might be wrong. So, okay, now in row two, actually those two that we ruled out were useful because there must be one in one of those two cells so we can rule out those two and there must be one in one of these two cells and that gives us a lot more we can rule out those two and those two 
because whichever of those two cells it's in, it must be touching all of those. So now this shape has become a bit better. There must be one in one of those two and one in one of those two. So the one there would rule that one out. Ah, we've got to have one in row three over here. So that cuts out a couple more cells. I'm really doing this kind of in reverse um, by ruling out cells rather than by actually finding stars. <coughs> so what else can we deduce? Now, no, that's not right. Hmm. Okay, in row two, there's got to be one here, but there could be one there and one there. That would lead to two next near each other in column four. That's quite possible. Hmm. This one's a bit chewier than the other puzzle, and hats off to you if you're seeing how to make progress logically immediately. Um, because I'm obviously not. No, still not quite seeing how to get anything done. Uh, I can't even rule that there must be one in one of those three. This is interesting. What is the next step here? One in one of those two. Okay, in, well, I'm just going to rule out one more cell here. In row four here, we've got two stars to fit in, so there must be one in each of the pairs. And in this pair, they're both seeing this cell, so that's gone. Okay, so now in row five, there must be one in one of these two. And that's interesting because we know there's one in one of those two. Only two cells in the shape, so we can rule out the other two. Now, that's done it. In row four, we can fill in the two stars. They must be there and there. Um, row five has one in one of those two, so it would see that cell. Now, one, two, three must be one in one of these two for the shapes. So there's not one there. And now this large shape in the bottom right, to fit two in, they have to both be there. And we can finish off. My goodness, that was, that was not the puzzle I was expecting after the first one. That was much harder. There's got to be one in one of those two, so this one can't be. And that's not one. So we can put one in there and that puts the last two in. There we go. Interesting. That was a little bit trickier. I'd be very interested to know if you found them equally as difficult or maybe if you found the first one a bit harder because you're a bit less used to them than me and that made the second one easier. I don't know. That was my, my experience was that one took quite a while. Seven minutes for me. So well done. If you were quicker on that one, you might well have been, and it's very well done if you were quicker on the first one where I thought I did okay. Uh, sorry for calling yesterday's video number 11. That was just a mistake. I'm going to call this video bonus number 10, um, and it's going to appear out of order just to try and catch up with the numbering system. Sorry about that. Hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.